Mario Bava is one of the most significant horror directors of all time, whose complex influences extend to great lengths in the world of cinema, especially if we talk about the horror genre. He took a vital role in the creation of the modern horror film. Bava said his fantasies are always horrible, no matter if they are about fighting dreams about his granddaughter whom he loves more than anything, or the haunting violinist who serenades to the loved ones by playing on their arms. For Bava, movies are a magical forge, allowing him to build a story with his own hands. Shooting a movie means playing tricks, inventions and magic. What attracts him in movies is to be presented with a problem and be able to solve it, to create an illusion, an effect, with almost nothing. His career encompassed gritty neorealism, the days of Hollywood on the Tiber, and a period when Italian genre product proved hugely popular with international audiences. For some, Mario Bava was one of the greatest practitioners of gothic horror films, impressing and influencing various filmmakers with his work in chiaroscuro, his use of deep focus, hard light and hard dark. Lighting for him was 70% of the effectiveness of the movie, because it creates the perfect atmosphere. He taught people a lot with his unique personal style. The name Bava could also be found as an homage in Quentin Tarantino's movie Pulp Fiction, which he based on him. Others were compelled by his way of telling a story through images, giving the viewer a feeling, a mixture of eroticism, of sex, of horror and starkness of image, which were considered more real than what most people would consider realistic films. Filmmakers of the world place the importance of the impact Mario Bava had in the film industry as an outsider, as demonstrating the liberating side of working without prestige or significance hovering over your head. The more disreputable the genre and the lower the budget, the less there is at stake and the freer you are to experiment and explore new territories, especially when one is as talented and resourceful as Bava was. Such recognitions, unfortunately, came with a huge delay. Despite the nickname Hitchcock from Cinecitta, during his lifetime, Bava had a marginal status and was considered only an efficient craftsman, while re-edited, shortened and sloppily dubbed versions of his films in America were ignored or welcomed with ridicule. This was somewhat fostered by Bava's excessive modesty and auto irony. He was the opposite of Fellini's idea of a director as a super old and conceited genius. He refused to engage in self-promotion, avoided interviews and spoke extremely sarcastically about his work. He even went as far as to say that Americans and the French are more stupid than Italians and that's one of the reasons why his movies are more popular in those parts of the world. Yet he said that he has no idea what the audience wants and for that reason he doesn't fear failing and making mistakes. Still, his significance is so fundamental that it cannot be emphasized enough. His comments to the negativity surrounding his projects was for people, and especially critics, to know the circumstances under which he had to shoot his films, literally having nothing but empty sound stages because they had no money. Bava always thought of himself as one who manages to get along. He didn't care about being successful, just going on, an advice he also received from his father. Bava, being a horror fan like many others, made many realize that fear is fun. Horror fans understand this, but a lot of critics of horror don't. This is only one way in which Bava's craft legitimizes horror as art and as classic as any other highly regarded masterpiece of cinema. Mario Bava's father, Eugenio Bava, was also an Italian cinematographer and Mario Bava's son, Lamberto, is also a film director. Mario Bava directed and co-directed more than 20 features during an 18-year period from 1960 to 1978. His body of work consists entirely of the Formula films, which made Italy the most successful production center in Western Europe in the 60s. His approach to filmmaking is primarily cinematographic. Out of all the genres he worked on, it was with horror and giallo thrillers that his genius really found a voice. Despite his horror accomplishments, Bava also worked in all of the popular genres of his day. Comedies, spaghetti westerns, peplum sword and sandal epics, Bond-style spy thrillers, even soft porn Mondo Kane World by Night romps. I Vampiri from 1957, co-directed by Riccardo Freda and Mario Bava, is considered to be the first genuine Italian horror film. I Vampiri is a black and white movie which grafted horror elements onto something that more closely resembles a crime film. Black Sunday from 1960 remains Mario Bava's most known film and serves as a prologue to just about every film Bava has ever made. Each of his works seems somehow a consequence of this original drama. Black Sunday is to this day a beautifully filmed gothic meditation on sex, death and revenge and perhaps one of the finest examples of Italian horror cinema. Given Bava's prominence in Italian horror and his significant influence on most other Italian directors in the genre, he actually made only half a dozen or so pure horror films. Despite his remarkable visual sense, there was obviously something more than images to Bava's success as a director. Italian horror films became internationally notable thanks to Mario Bava's contributions. 
Pava took the idea of vibrant, colorful terror to such a masterful level that it affected all new routes through fantasy. In the case of Bava, all of his films influenced so much great cinema classics and even whole genres that he is still one of the most quoted directors in a wide range of cinema genres in what we define as postmodern world. When asked where he ideally would be laid to rest, his response was in a coffin where he can rest in peace, but where he can leave at night to bite the necks of the films he made.